lives or their arms and legs or their whatever, and they need to be recognized. Not only local or near or just recent veterans, but all veterans need to be ex, uh, you know, what's going on over there? I have to get confidential the meeting. For Jonas. Oh, Jonas's phone number, our movie reviewer. Very important. All right, let's get on with the news. First, this is Stan Weisleder on The View from Over Here in the studio with Malcolm Barry Berman on CRNTalk.com, which is broadcast over the entire planet and beyond. So if you saw the movie Interstellar last week like I did, you may be able to catch the show out where they were. Uh, do, uh, do we go through wormholes? I didn't know whether the uh, well, signal got through wormholes. Well, I don't wormholes. know. That's all theoretical. That remains to be seen. That was so confusing. It was, but anyway, let's get on with the news. Now, the news, as far as I'm concerned, is just a lot of SOS this week. So let's see if I can entertain you. Now, just about everyone during their lifetime has gone out with a dog, okay? And here's a story about this young woman who went out with a real dog. In Australia, this young lady was arrested for having sex with a dog, and it was all videotaped, not videotaped, but on her iPhone. And she was arrested. Well, the judge didn't know what to do about it because there was no way of determining if the dog was forced into the act or if the dog was injured or harmed in any way. But but the dog may not have been of legal age. Well, we didn't get down to that. And it's hard to tell what a dog's real age is. Anyway, getting on. That, that is the dog of a story. Yeah, I, don't know. I know. It's, yes. <laughs> I need a rim shot. Unemployment as of October is supposed to be down to 5.8%. So if it's down that low, why can't I get a job? Next item. Did you know that we double our energy requirements every 20 years and that three-quarters of the world's energy still comes from fossil fuels and that 10% of the energy in the average light bulb creates light while 90% of the energy creates heat? Okay, now the question is this. Doesn't the, the, sound good. Is this the new bulbs or the old bulbs? Well, that's, the, that's the old bulb. While the new bulbs, the fluorescent bulbs or fluorescent category type bulbs, they use approximately 80% less energy than conventional light bulbs. So think about that. By next year, and I predict this, Iran will have its own nuclear weapons so that they will be able to finally stop the charade of constantly stalling at these international meetings regarding nuclear subjects. But, but then will they nuke uh, uh, Israel? That's a question. I have no idea what a- they're going a- to and do. And then the question w- which I have, if they, let's say, use nuclear power in Israel and bomb them, wouldn't the fallout of the nuclear – you know, in the air, the whatever poison in the air come over them if the wind Depends is blowing? Depends on which way the wind is blowing. Right. Uh, and right. Hey, Paul, do we have uh, Jonas ready? Okay, Jonas is here today going to talk about some uh, plays that he saw this past week, which I understand he wasn't too crazy about. So, Jonas, take it over from here. Hey, guys. How are you? Yeah, hey, Jonas, just one point, because we were talking before about uh, your, your cousin by marriage. Oh, it was Barry, yes. Barry, and I, I've just read something that he was born in Baltimore but raised in North Carolina. That, that's exactly what I would assume, yes. Okay. My, uh, my cousin Judy is his uh, first cousin. Okay, that bit of trivia out of the way. Exactly. That's All a, right, stop been, bragging, Jonas. It Let's was get a, back uh, to the reviews. It was a busy weekend for theater. Unfortunately, nothing that really excited me. Um, I got to see um, the U.S. premiere of Hunchback of Notre Dame, which was in Germany for three years and was actually a, uh, a soaring success in Germany. The production here wasn't... As thrilling for my for me, uh, other people seem to really like it. So I would tell everybody to to decide on your own whether you want to go to it. I personally found the music to be a little underwhelming and um, the production itself to be too scaled down to really thrill me. Where was it? The uh, play? It was at the La Jolla Playhouse. It's going to be extended uh, to I believe December seventh, but don't hold me to that. Um, and like I said, I've talked to several people that loved it, so I may be in a minority or I may be. 
uh, someone that uh, some people will agree with and some people don't. I never claim to be um, the, the voice of all the people. No one can be. Yeah, but after your review, they certainly won't extend it. I, I would never. I don't know about that. Uh, but, you're, you're, you're our maven. But anyway, so um, on the other hand, um, I have seen some, some great stuff on TV this week. Uh, if anyone has had a chance to see Olive Kittredge, the uh, HBO miniseries, it's tr- quite fantastic. It's about four hours. Uh, Francis McDormand plays Olive Kittredge, a very, very caustic woman, uh, someone who makes more enemies than friends. Uh, it's not someone I'd want to have over for dinner, but she is truly fabulous in the performance. Uh, her husband's played by Richard Jenkins, who was Oscar nominated a few years ago for The Visitor. He's always outstanding. Their marriage is uh, a rocky one in the movie. However, I think a lot of people will recognize the dynamics uh, in either their own marriage or in friends or family's marriage. It's an all-star cast. It's got uh, Bill Murray. It's got John Gallagher from Broadway and from uh, TV's The Newsroom. It's worth seeing. Uh, If you have HBO, it's probably running the rest of the month. Uh, If you have HBO on demand, I'm sure it's on there. Something I highly recommend. Also, I saw the Tom Cruise movie, uh, Edge of Tomorrow, which just came out on DVD. Uh, if you love Tom Cruise, it's a great film to see him still the top form of his action. Uh, if you hate Tom Cruise, it's a great movie to see him murdered 563 times. <laughs> As if anyone knows the story, it's sort of an action version of Groundhog Day, where a uh, soldier winds up getting killed, and every time he's killed, he's brought back to life. to relive the day over and over, and he lives it quite a few times. Uh, it's written by um, Chris um, Chris McQuarrie, who won the Oscar for Usual Suspects. So as you can imagine, he's very uh, strong at those twisty turns um, in the scripts. Yeah, I saw that movie already, and it really uh, had me uh, wondering and uh, stretched the credibility factor a bit. But anyway, go ahead. You, with you, don't, you, don't, you don't go in there trying to... Uh, to think of the physics of it. You go to just enjoy the action and enjoy the fun. Uh, it was directed by Doug Lyman, who also directed Go, which is one of my favorite movies, as well as the original Born Identity, uh, a excellent action director, and it's a quite a fun movie. Yeah. Aren't they doing a new uh, Born Identity? They are. I just read that, that uh, Matt Damon is uh, going to be doing it, and so is... Um, is uh, Paul Greengrass, uh, I said his name wrong, I think, uh, the w- director of, I believe, the second and third one. It is uh, w- w- Jeremy, Jeremy Rayner, wasn't he? In Jeremy the- Rayner. He was in Rayner. the reboot, uh-huh. uh, Born Legacy, and that wasn't one of my favorites. I, I really enjoy the Born films, but that one was a little uh, less exciting for me. Well, but it didn't, he, didn't, he didn't play Born, he played someone else in it, didn't he? Played, he? he played a different, yes, he right. played a Born esque character. Right. So, so are both of them going to be in it or, or no? I have no idea. Oh. As far as I understand, it will be Jason Bourne. You know, in the old days, they would have called it Son of Bourne. Bourne. Yeah. Or, or how about Reborn? That, 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 that would have been except for he kind of died on, on, on birth. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I think, I think I need more rim shots in this uh, show. All right, Jonas, uh, next week... Uh, I've got Kinky Boots. Uh, okay. I'll be seeing that on Wednesday. It premieres at the Pantages Theater. So I'll be giving you my assessment of that. And that's I with... See, I did see the show uh, in, on Broadway about a year and a half ago. Did you see the original movie? I saw the original movie when it first came out back in, I believe, 2003, but don't hold me to that number. And that was uh, Sidney Lauper and uh, Harvey Firestone? Uh, Cindy Lauper wrote the music and lyrics, and Harvey Feistein wrote the, uh, the, the book. book. It is uh, directed and choreographed um, by the same uh, person who did Hairspray, uh, Jerry Mitchell. <laughs> that should be a wild show. It is. It, it's, it's a lot of fun, and uh, I'll give you my full review next week. Good. We look forward that, to it. And, and where can we read? Uh, uh, the review for Hunchback of Notre Dame should be up. Uh, either this week or beginning of next at theatermania.com. As soon as it's up, I will send a link to you. Fantastic. So, be able to put it on the site. Yeah, send it over to Pam, and she'll put it on our, on our website. Too. Absolutely, absolutely. Hey, fantastic. Thanks a lot, and uh, have a good reviewing week. Sounds great. All right, guys, have a wonderful time. Okay, okay. we'll see you next week. See you next week.
Now we have some time. Okay. No, no, no. We don't have time. We have two interesting guests, Malcolm. You forgot with the first one. I don't know if our okay. first one's on the phone yet. Well, I don't think I'll it. talk about her while Paul is uh, dialing his fingers. And, and she's on. Okay. Well, and our special guest for the week on The View from Over Here is someone who was actually born into showbiz. Her name is Jennifer Edwards. And she is the author of When Angels Cry and an actress in her own right. If you Google her, look her up, that is, you'll find that she has an extensive IMDb listing with a couple of dozen credits. And for you people out there who do not know what IMDb means, it's the industry Listings for and, and stands for International Movie Database. And all our listeners know what this stands for. Not Stop all. Stop speaking somebody, down hey, to them. If somebody just tuned tuned in, they wouldn't know what it is. Uh, our, 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 our people are very well educated and uh, not, not all of them. Some are uh, stupid. Paul is like raising me. his head. He know, he knows exactly what yeah, it's about. He knows. Okay, now if you never heard of Jennifer Edwards, you certainly heard of her parents. Her father is Blake Edwards, who passed away not too long ago. Her mother, Patricia Walker, who was an actress, then a set designer or clothing designer for the movie industry. And her stepmother is Julie Andrews. By the way, how did we ever get step for stepmother? Every time I hear stepmother, you know, I, I think... I have no idea. Every time I think of stepmother, I think of Cinderella Well, you have a computer. Why don't you just Google it and find out and then let us know next week. Maybe I will. Jennifer, are you on board, Rao? I am on board, Captain. Oh, don't, don't call me Captain. You can call me Sir if you spell it C U R. Oh. Oh. Uh, by, by the way, where, where, this is Malcolm. Uh, where where are you physically? Physically, I am in my my bedroom. Physically, oh my in, in God. Los Angeles. I'm uh, not well, sleeping. I just happen to be in my bedroom. Well, wh wh whereabouts? Quiet. What city? In uh, I'm I'm in uh, Topanga Canyon in uh. Los Angeles. Yes, waiting for for some rain. It looks like uh, today. rain. rain? Been promising that for over a uh, year. By the way, we're going to send a, no. a film crew so you can uh, we, we we could tape you and have you on the air. <laughs> oh, good. Okay, perfect. <laughs> hey, Jennifer, we have tons yes. of questions to ask you. First, let's talk about your book. Okay, when sure. angels cry. Is it autobiographical, semi-autobiographical, or is it total fiction? Well, I don't think anything is is even when it's fiction. It's never totally fiction i don't think because i think writers you know tend to write what they know so there's there's a, there's some elements in in this book that uh, are based on my life but it's certainly not uh autobiographical i'm okay, not ready jennifer to do that. hold on a sec when you hear yes. that music in the background that means we're coming up to a commercial break so don't go away. We haven't I'm even started. Away. You're listening okay. to The View from Over Here, heard on CRNTalk.com. If you have any questions or any comments, please uh, email us at Stan or Malcolm at ViewFromOverHere.com. Stay tuned, and we'll be right back. A Killer of Lions by Stan Weisleder. There were four squadrons of black fighter pilots during World War II that had to fight two air forces in order to gain recognition, the Luftwaffe and the U.S. Army Air Corps. The HBO special and the recent attempt at a full-length feature film do not come close to the full and true story of these brave men. They were not ball players. They were not rap singers. They were fighter pilots and American heroes in the truest sense. A Killer of Lions by Stan Weisleder. When you really want Italian food, you've got to go to Columbo's. Columbo's Italian Steakhouse and Jazz Club, Colorado Boulevard, Eagle Rock. It's that little neighborhood place you wish was down the street from you. And this time of the year, Columbo's makes office parties and holiday planning easy, delicious, and unforgettable. You've got enough to handle this time of the year. Why add to the worry list? Worry no more. Columbo's, 323-254-9138. 323-254-9138. It's 
It's that easy. Mouth-watering, sizzling steaks, scrumptious seafood, Columbus Family Italian specialties, desserts to die for, jazz every night, the world's greatest meatballs, friendly and attentive service, all at an affordable price, makes Columbo's Holiday Party Central. Call Vic at Columbo's. Book your holiday party now. 323-254-9138. 323-254-9138. Columbo's Buon Natale. Mangia. There's no better way to say I love you. I'm thankful you're in my life. I'm glad to be with you. I'm thinking about you or I miss you. Then with a spectacular flower arrangement from ProFlowers.com. A gorgeous fresh flower arrangement is a must to dress up every birthday, holiday, or anniversary. As a special treat for you, your beautiful flowers start at an amazing low price of $19.99. And ProFlowers.com will include a free vase with floral orders. Imagine a beautiful bouquet of 100 blooms for only $19.99 with a free vase included. Every festive bouquet is guaranteed to last at least seven days. Tell your loved ones you're thinking of them with flowers. Go to proflowers.com slash radio and enter your code to receive this special offer. Enter code DAISY. That's proflowers.com slash radio code DAISY. Send a bouquet they'll never forget from proflowers.com slash radio code DAISY. The Trees, an epic novel by Stan Weisleder, told in the Godfather fashion with two-thirds of the book taking place in Las Vegas and describing the transition from the mob to Howard Hughes to corporate America. This book is Las Vegas. Jim Santangelo from the International Brotherhood of Teamsters said, I didn't grow up in New York or Las Vegas. I grew up in Jersey City, but I know everyone in this book. I loved it. Hal Rothbart, publisher, says, I wish I had written it. The Trees by Stan Weisleder. Take it away, Stan. Take it away. I'm taking it away. This is Stan Weisleder, back from our long commercial break, and I'm here with Malcolm Barry Berman in the studio, CRNTalk.com, and the program is The View from Over Here. We have with us right now Jennifer Edwards. So yes. can I call you Jen or is it Jennifer? You can. Jennifer. Either is perfectly fine. I'll call you Jen because it's uh, only one syllable instead. Of three. How about how about Jenny? Jen, you know what? Uh, my parents uh, always called me Jenny. I, I think when I hit twenty-one years old, I said, "You know, I want to be Jennifer because it sounded more mature." Yeah, so good if, move. If you hear anybody call me Jenny, then they've probably known me my whole life. Right. I have that people people who call me uh, my name is Malcolm. Anybody calls me Mally. I know from elementary <laughs> school. Right. There you go. They always say, no, I, you. All right, Jen, uh, yes. we asked you before about your book, When Angels uh-huh. Cry, and uh, to what extent is it autobiog or fiction or what? So, And, and you started right. to answer till we had a, uh, one of those uh, rude commercial intermissions. Yeah, Not rude. The, the, the rudeness pays the bills. I'm sorry, Stan. Well, I, it's I, still I rude. Them. That's right. Um, yeah, I like that music too. It, it made me feel like Cinderella or something. Um, no, the, the book, I, I think the only um, real autobiographical um, um, stuff in the book is probably um, my uh, character Sarah and her mother, Olivia. A, a lot of that uh, it comes from my life, uh, especially growing up. Um, so. Some of it is autobiographical, but but certainly the the whole book is is considered fiction. Uh, but what what um, made you write it? You know, it was it was just a personal challenge, really. I, I've always written. Um, I come from, you know, um, my father was was obviously a writer, and I've written screenplays, I've written songs, I've written poetry, um, and I just uh, I just wondered what it felt like to write a book. And, okay, it's, uh, it's genetic. Probably, okay. probably. And then, my, you know, my stepmother uh, and one of my sisters, they write children's books, so I sort of didn't want to go into that arena necessarily. And um, so I just, uh, I decided I wanted it to be a romantic or a romance book. I, I thought 
you know, what's the kind of book I would want to read if I was on vacation, you know, in Hawaii sitting by a pool? <laughs> you know, I don't want it, you know, to be too heavy hitting or I want it to make people laugh, cry, you know, feel titillated, all of those things. And then it just kind of snowballed from there. Yeah. Now, I looked up your you now, when we Googled you or I Googled you, looked up your credits in the uh, mm-hmm. motion picture industry. Uh, they're mm-hmm. quite extensive. You started out mm-hmm. when you were actually uh, a kid, and now you're grown yes. up. I am grown up. Well, <laughs> some people might debate that. But, uh, I'm older. Let's put it that way. You know, people yes, say I, that I, about I, me too. They say I. <laughs> they say I have to stop acting like a child. I said if I did that, I I I would die. I would yeah, just but, end. And yeah. the question is why. End. Pardon. The question is why stop acting as a child. Well, yeah, exactly. No, I, you know, I didn't know that that was necessarily something that I wanted to do. I, um, I was discovered, if you will. I was on on the movie set of um, of the party, which was a film my father had written and was directing. And, Peter Sellers. And I, uh huh. Yeah, that was. And a- um, I had I was living in in London at the time with my my real mother and I would come out to Los Angeles for for vacations and be with my dad, and so I was on the set and I uh, we found out that somebody was on the set you know a, a, a talent scout or something and had seen me and wondered who I was, and um, anyway it turned out that they they knew that uh, they were getting ready to do um, an NBC version of the movie Heidi, um, and I gather that they had seen something like 1,500 girls. They'd auditioned, you know, all these girls to play Heidi and and um, found out who I was and asked my dad if I would audition for this film, and I did. And within, like, a few days, I got the part of Heidi and was flying off to Switzerland to huh, wow. star in this movie with... You know, Sir Michael Redgrave and <laughs> Maximilian Schell, and and I'd never, I'd never done anything before. I'd never, you know, I didn't even, hadn't even done a school All right, play. Jen, listen, we have that annoying break yes. coming up again, but I want to ask you a question and think about it. So when you come back, yes. you've been on a lot of stuff. Did you take acting classes? Did you go to school, or was it just natural because of who your parents? Okay, are? hold that thought because we're coming up to our next break. You're listening to The View from Over Here, heard on CRNTalk.com. And keep tuned, and we'll be back in a few minutes. The next time you're in Southern California, visit the Riviera Restaurant in Calabasas. Riviera, as the name implies, is the ultimate in Calabasas restaurants. There's not even a close second. And what's better suited for the Beverly Hills of the Valley than a Beverly Hills type of restaurant and watering hole without those ridiculous Beverly Hills prices? They're so good. With impeccable service, they probably don't even need this commercial. Even now, it's hard to get a good table except for off hours. But if you really want to treat yourself or your date, call 818-224-2163. That's 818-224-2163. That's the Riviera Restaurant in Calabasas, California. California. Lumber Liquidators, America's largest specialty flooring store, is using our buying power to offer great deals in over 230 hardwood and laminate floors just in time for the holidays. Get pre-finished three-quarter inch solid maple for $159 a square foot. That's more than half off other stores. Save up to 43% on our thickest and best laminates. Plus, attach padding at no extra cost. And get other incredible flooring deals. Plus, 18 months special financing. Get to your local store. These deals are going on now. Visit LumberLiquidators.com to find a store near you. As a small business owner, there's one word that you absolutely dread, payroll. For small businesses, it's a big burden. You may think you're saving time and money doing it yourself, but come on, are you? Timesheets, processing checks, calculating taxes, a total waste of your time. Paychex simplifies payroll processing, saving you time and money. Submit your payroll online, fax it in, or call your dedicated Paychex payroll specialist. And you're done. Learn more at TriPaychecks.com. Come on, do the math. The IRS dishes out 8 million penalties a year. Make one mistake and you're on the hook. On average, you're losing nearly one business day every month doing payroll. That's time and money you'll never get back. Unless you get paychecks. More than half a million small businesses already do. Call 888-578-5378. Trade payroll pressure for peace of mind. Call now. 888-578-5378. 
888-578-5378. That's 888-578-5378. Have you ever considered adding a home security system but thought it would be too expensive? Here's the good news. There's never been a more affordable time to help protect your home, valuables, and your loved ones. You can now get a $100 Visa card from Protect Your Home, your authorized ADT dealer, with the installation of a new ADT monitored system. Here's even better news. Your new system, worth $850, is free. You pay just a $99 installation charge and purchase monthly monitoring for less than $2 a day. Call Protect Your Home today at 1-866-669-8954. That's one 1- 866-669-8954. Get the peace of mind that comes with owning an ADT monitored system plus a $100 Visa card from Protect Your Home. Call now 1-866-669-8954. That's 1-866-669-8954. 36-month monitoring contract required. General terms and conditions apply. Visit protectyourhome.com forward slash terms. How would you like to taste the most delicious meatballs this holiday season? You can with our friend Larry Man- Eddie's Meatballs, as seen on QVC. Go to QVC.com and search Manetti Meatballs. These are hand-rolled three ounces each meatballs, 30 in a bag made with veal, beef, pork, spices, breadcrumbs, imported ricotta and Romano cheese. They are delicious. Manetti's Meatballs, fried in pure Italian olive oil. They come frozen. You can heat and serve them in a 350-degree oven for just 10 to 15 minutes. They'll make a real hit this holiday season. Taste Larry Manetti's Meatballs. Larry Manetti from Hawaii Five-0 and Magnum P.I. He was on QVC, and he sold out of these meatballs. Go to QVC.com and search Manetti Meatballs. That's QVC.com, Manetti, M-A-N-E-T-T-I, Meatballs. QVC.com, search Manetti Meatballs, the real taste of Italy. What are we... Now? Take, now you're on. Are you sure? I don't know. This are we it? on? Paul says we're on. In fact, Jen, I'm going to put the okay. picture Did you think yes. about the question that we asked you before we were interrupted by that commercial break? I certainly did. Uh, you asked me whether or not I'd uh, taken any kind of acting classes before um, getting that the role of Heidi. No, I hadn't done anything, and, and um, I, I, I guess... To answer what you were asking, I, I think it is and possibly was genetic. I, I grew up in, in hey, you know, around. you're a natural. There you go. <laughs> exactly. But I did take acting classes later in life. I did, uh, I did you know, uh, end up in um, school plays, and I did end up studying with um, uh, Nina Foch for years and um, um, Ed K. Martin and a bunch of um, uh, you know, really good um, teachers. Um, so did it help, did or were point. you just natural, natural? Well, from from I, what I gather, I I was a natural. I mean, I you know the fact that they had seen, you know, almost you know over a thousand girls supposedly for that role, and I came in having no background at all, and and got the role. But I, did it I help? Uh, did it help uh, who your parents were? Well, I think so. I think, you know, because I, I was around movie sets and I watched, you know, um, some incredible actors working. And uh, my father being the director, I, I, you know, that he was, I, I saw how he was with his actors. And so, I, I, yeah, I think through osmosis and I think, you know, genetically, I mean, I'm fourth generation. Uh, my gr- great grandfather was a silent film director, and my grandfather was was a first uh, assistant director, and then my father, and um, so you know, <laughs> yeah, it's yeah, probably it, it's yeah. all genetic. You, exactly. you, you were born into it, but you know something. Even though you were born into it, you had to give a lot of your uh, yourself to get where you were. Oh sure, it's not yes, only connections. I think so. Connections yes, only I, I open think. the door for you. Yeah, Jen. Oh. No. Two quick yes. questions on your book. Number one, uh-huh. you have to send me a copy so I can read it. That's number one. Absolutely. And number two, the question is, have you sold the movie rights yet? 
<laughs> well, it's only it's only been out for for a little over a month, and um, my uh, publicist actually, my uh, my PR guy was was just saying last week we should you know try and work on getting some sort of a movie deal. I mean, I I can totally see it as a film. And Is it, are I, you talking I, about Joe Trainer? Yes, Joe okay. and Gene Schwamm. Yes, at, at Hanson and Schwamm. Yes, they're fabulous. In yeah, fact, no, no, Gene, no, definitely. Um, yeah, in, in today's market, there's so many outlets for uh, features. It's yes, yes. it's well, mind w- boggling. Right, and I think I think it would make a fun a fun film if if, if done you know correctly. I think it would be uh, very um, you know it, it would be fun. Would you want to do the screenplay? You know, uh, I probably would want to be a part of it. Uh, I'm not sure that uh, I would necessarily, um, you know, be the right person to, to write the whole screenplay, although I could. But I certainly would want a lot of creative, um, you know, decision-making and all of that. Well, the next step, to, are you ever tempted to direct? I mean, your father was so mm-hmm. brilliant. Oh, thank you. Um, no, I haven't. It's uh, my brother is is a, is a wonderful director, and uh, I think yeah. The, the older I get, the more interested I am in in possibly delving into something like that. Yeah, because um, I, and especially in films, control being the director, that's w- w- where the game is. Especially if you have uh, you know the rights to final cut. I thought the control sure. rests with the people that put up the money. <laughs> <laughs> well, you no, know, it's a fine line. You know, my 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 father, you know, finally had to uh, make sure that he did have a uh, final cut um, uh, because on a few of his earlier films, those studio heads, talking heads, would go in and and completely redo um, a lot of what what my dad's vision was in and in, in especially in one particular movie and um which movie was that so it was a film called wild rovers it was a western and um and the head of the studio had just thought that he could you know he wanted to be uh some big wig director in his in his dreams and and went in and cut scenes and the whole it, it was horrible, it was horrible. Yeah, and my that's all devastated. because they know better right no, it's not that they know better. I, yeah, I, I, sure. I'm being facetious, Malcolm. I, 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 no, no, I don't I think know they know are. better. I, I think a lot of studio heads want to shorten the movie because they can have more plays on it. Yes. Well, that was a, that was part of it. And, and this, this particular man had a huge ego, and and uh, didn't he and my father didn't see eye to eye on a lot of different things. But what and, studio um, head doesn't have an immense ego? <laughs> Well, you know, I think it's changed. I do think it's changed because a lot of uh, a lot of directors, you know, do have you know final cut now. Um, yeah, that, 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 yeah, that's that's the important thing, you know, because yeah. it, it, if you change, it, you can cut out one or two scenes or, or one or two cells uh, uh, from the from the film, and it changes the whole thing. Right. Oh, absolutely. It, 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 it's amazing, you know, when you're in the editing room. Yeah, I mean, it's that, like being a a composer. I mean, you don't you don't go, go in and all of a sudden take out you know eight bars of you know Ravel's Bolero just because you think it's you know better as a sh- a shorter piece of music you know yeah. or you don't go in with with a paintbrush and change some Picasso because you prefer the color blue. Yeah, I did. But the, the, yeah, that, that, that reminds me of when, when Ted Turner wanted to colorize all the old movies. Oh, I know. I don't know if you remember know. that and. Uh, Oh yeah, sure. And oh, yeah. Uh, yes, some of those movies were meant to be black and white. Absolutely. The, the, the lightings and the you know I watch. Uh, you know, my classic example is Casablanca. That was, of course. I, I, of course. I mean, so dramatic. The the the, co- the the shades and the whites and the darkness. It's, Absolutely. It's Absolutely. beautiful. Yeah, of course. Uh, yeah. Well, it's also you know like I mean you wouldn't. You wouldn't uh, make all the the Emerald City and the Wizard of Oz. You wouldn't make black and white, right? <laughs> you know, except it, it opened up. Didn't it open up in black and white? Yes, yes. But the point is, is that you know, you you had to have that contrast. You had right. to see the Emerald City as this gorgeous, colorful place, you know, and, right. and you know, so just because you think it might look, uh, um, you know, better or right. whatever. 
you, you wouldn't go in and, and just do that yeah. just because you feel like that's it. That's true. Okay, now, now, I have a question. <laughs> Uh, from your background, I know I've I've always seen shots of you know where your dad lived when he was married to, to Julie Angels, a beautiful place in uh, Malibu. Were you raised mm-hmm. partly there, or no? Um, no, they had that uh, when they bought that house. I was already um, on my own, mm-hmm. um, and uh, but I lived. I had my own home about four blocks away um, from that house, so I was there all the time, and and um, we always. We always did uh, Sunday dinners with the entire family, and and um, uh, you know, so I was I was over there a lot, and um, but I didn't actually grow up in that house. And you said you spent part of that time in, in London, growing up. Well, no, uh, no. It, when my my uh, real mother and dad split up, I was seven years old, and my mother uh, Patricia moved to London, and uh, I moved out. I moved with her, so I grew up in London until I was about sixteen. So um, you, 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 you have quite an interesting yeah, life. I'd, you're I'd love an to see you. International person. I am. Yes, I'm very cosmopolitan. I, I'd, I'd love to see an autobiography of uh, that that you wrote. You well, sound you like know, you're fascinating. Eventually, eventually wait. I, I have a I'll question. Hope. You've you're yes. very cosmopolitan. You've been all around the world. Have you ever lived on a farm? Well, I, I sort of, if you, if you talk to my fiancé now, he would tell you that he feels like we're on a farm. I, we have five dogs and a bird, and I keep talking about getting some chickens and a pig. Uh, in Topanga uh, Canyon? Yes. Yeah, Topanga Canyon has quite a few few areas that you, you, oh, you, yeah. you, you're not like in Los Angeles. You're someplace in... Yeah, South Carolina. Well, you know, Malcolm, yeah, that's, that's true. Like we it. used to take yeah. our dog to a kennel up there in the mountains, and uh-huh. you, you think you're in a different world. It is like unbelievable, yes. indescribable. Yes. Well, that's why I like it. I don't, you know, it, I, I love being in nature, and uh, and when I lived in Malibu, I, you know, when you say a farm, I really kind of did. I mean, I had ducks and chickens and rabbits. And yeah, but Malibu objects. isn't a farm. No. But Topanga, no. yeah, Topanga could yeah. be categorized. Uh, okay, now personal questions. Have you ever gone to the nudist colony? Or are they still there? No, it doesn't. It doesn't exist anymore. What um, happened? It ha- uh, I don't. I don't know. It was. It. It just doesn't. It's not here anymore. I think uh, um, the property was sold or something. Um, and, uh, and and to answer the question, no. I wouldn't <laughs> No, um, no. I, I've, I've always, you know, when, when people mention Topanga Canyon, they 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 talk about either that or the uh, Will Gear uh, theater right. there. That's still here, the Theatricum. It's still here, and they still put on wonderful uh, Shakespearean productions. Mm-hmm. And you know, I think there's there's you know there there's a lot of misconceptions about Topanga. I mean, um, you know, back in the '70s when I would come as a high school. You know, student. I would come into Topanga because I had friends that lived here, and and it was very hippie-ish. And it's you know, LA's uh, version of hillbillies. Well, kind of, but more more like uh, you know, everybody just assumed that everybody was smoking pot and hitchhiking, and you know, and all of that kind of thing. But it's it's very very different now. There's a lot of young families, and and then you get. The people who've never left Topanga, people who've lived in Topanga for forty years, and you know that just uh, wouldn't wouldn't consider living anywhere else. Yeah, Topanga uh, uh, reminds me of uh, when I went to uh, not Santa Clara. Um, I'm trying to t- Santa Cruz. Uh huh. Sure. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, yeah, I, I remember the the Greenwich Village back in the sixties and seventies, and it's the same type of mm-hmm. people. Sure. But, but as I say, it's very, it is very different now. We have, um, you know, lot, like I said, a lot of young families who are coming in because they want their, they want to raise their children in a in a, a quiet, you know, um, nature based sort of lifestyle. Right, just just ten yeah. minutes away from uh, Woodland Hills or Malibu. Exactly. You can get yeah. You can get into the valley in 10 minutes and you can be in santa monica in 15 and malibu in 15 and as so long, it's very it's central as long as it doesn't rain and there is uh yeah well, no no rock slides yeah no i, I exactly. used to go through topanga canyon i had a friend that lives in woodland hills and i worked in santa monica so i used to take yeah. that every morning beautiful ride 
Yeah, no, it's 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 wonderful. I I, I can't imagine being anywhere else. Right, c- c- coming from the valley, when when you get the crest and you you go downhill and you're you're looking at uh, the Pacific Ocean, it's it's so marvelous. Yeah, it's like a rebirth yeah. every day. Exactly. Exactly. Yes. Uh, so, are, are, so, do you do any acting, or are you uh, interested? In yeah, your- I I. I actually um, am hoping to kind of get back into it. I've, I've uh, sort of put the word out to diff- my agents that I want to uh, um, put my, you know, throw my hat back in the ring, so to speak. I miss it. I miss being um, on a set as an actor. And uh, I, I sort of hung it up for a little while because my youngest daughter, who she's almost 22 now, has been a professional dancer since she was a kid. She uh, trained with Debbie Allen, and Debbie took her all around the world, uh-huh. and um, and it was just very difficult to, you know, she was dancing like 40 hours a week, plus school, plus, you know, um, all of that, and I just, um, you know, didn't really I, I have time. I right, understand, yeah, so, you put your, so you put your career on hiatus. Yes, exactly. But now it's so, time to get know, back. I think so. I'm, I'm, I'm hoping for some work at some point soon. Well, well hope, hopefully we have some producers, directors listening to the show. Uh, who's, who's your agent? Well, um, I actually uh, have um, a couple. Well, Terry Mandel is uh, at Abstract Talent, and um, Julie Colbert over at WME wor- is working with me as well. So, yeah, so, I mean, they're, they're you know, some good good people that are keeping their eye out for me. Oh, good. And, well, uh, ho- hopefully when you're... Uh, I uh, can get out of Topanga Canyon. We'd love to have you back on the show, but in studio. I love it. Yeah, we'd like well, you to live, live. I would love that. I would love that. I, c- because I, there's so much more synergy when, when you know, we can go eyeball to eyeball, and you sound like a fascinating I totally, person. I totally believe that, and you guys sound great, and I would love to just sit in the room with you guys. Yeah, well. Well, let us know. I'm sorry we can't send the limo for you, but we might be able to send the helicopter. Uh, <laughs> Oh, there you go. Is okay. there a heliport I'll around you? Parachute. I'll parachute down. <laughs> um, no, uh, yes, there are several places to land in Topanga. So, yeah, just let me know. And we'll send them. It reminds me of a story. I was doing a traffic show, and we're going to have the uh, w- one of the sergeants from the Pasadena Police Force come as a guest. And it was 10 minutes before it was. Uh, we were in Westwood, and it was 10 minutes before he was supposed to be on the air. And he said, I'm leaving now. I said, how the hell are you going to make it? He said, oh, my helicopter's going to land at the federal building. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Oh, wow. Hey, so, Jen, Jen, uh, sorry to interrupt, Malcolm, but uh, Jen, do you want to book something now? Because we really would like to have you come back. I would love it. Sure. All right. Um, but I live, know. live. We've... Okay, okay. You're putting me on the spot here. Yeah. Absolutely. So uh, we have an opening November 25. And the next opening is December 9. When, when is, okay. is your, has your book been released yet? Oh, yeah. It's out. It's on Amazon.com, BarnesandNoble.com, and uh, in various bookstores. And, yeah. Uh, real quick, what is your email address? Okay. It's T is in Tom, E-A, F is in Frank, E-R, the number three. At yahoo.com. Okay. Anyway, thank you very much. We have to come up to a break. Uh, Stan will get back to you later as far Great. as booking you again and having you come out to see us. We're, we're in Perfect. beautiful Sunland. You're listening. Bye. Thanks again. You're listening to crntalk.com. It's downtown the view from over here. Sunland. We'll be back in a few minutes. Someday, there'll be a cure. Someday, we won't lose the people we love. But when is someday? Someday is today. Thanks to the Leukemia and Lymphoma Society, hundreds of thousands diagnosed with blood cancer are today living a normal life. We're making cures happen. Join us. Call 888-HELP-LLS. Go to LLS.org. Help us reach today sooner. Let me take just a moment or two, if I may, and talk about a great place to eat. That's right. For you folks anywhere in the eastern San Fernando Valley, drop in to Bob's Big Boys. That's right. In Sun Valley at 8274 Sunland Boulevard. Now, everybody remembers the name Bob's. They're getting bigger and bigger every day. 
And little old Bob carrying the hamburger in his checkered overalls is the same Bob that you remember from back through the years. And, of course, if you want to go in for a great lunch, remember their classic burger, the original double-deck hamburger combination. Delicious 100% pure ground beef in two patties with American cheese, lettuce, and our famous big boy special sauce. The name is Bob, and I think when you go in, you'll say, by golly, I'm sure glad that I found this restaurant because it's good for breakfast, lunch, or dinner. They've got all kinds of things, and all you have to do is remember. Bob's Big Boy in Sun Valley at 8274 Sunland Boulevard. It's a great place to eat. Homeowners, now is the season to be thinking about your roof, because all it takes is one storm to turn a small roof problem into a major leak. If it's time for a new roof, call Sears at 888-465-9720. You can save $500 if you call right now. Sears licensed, fully insured contractors can get your roofing job done right. Just call 888-465-9720. Sears has a variety of shingles and styles that are built for long-lasting performance, and you'll save $500 if you call now. So call Sears for a free and home consultation at 888-465-9720. Hurry, offer ends soon. Not available in all areas. Installation provided by Sears authorized licensed contractors. License information available upon request. That's Sears Roofing. Call right now and save $500. Call 888-465-9720. 888-465-9720. Call Sears now and get that roof repaired. Call 888-465-9720. Every day is Save the Earth Day, and each of us has a part to play. For more information and how you can do your part to save the Earth, contact us at savetheworld.net. That's savetheworld.net. Hey, Stan. We're on. Are you asking me to wake up? I was just snoozing, Malcolm. Well, what's happening with your other guest? Tell them. Well, I think we've had some technical difficulties. Yeah, Maybe yeah. it's due to sunspots. Yeah, I think it's you got the wrong number. Well, I don't want to say that because it would make one of us look stupid. <laughs> so let's blame it on sunspots. <laughs> blame it on the bossa but, nova. Uh, Michael, if you're listening out there in Radio Land, we tried your landline number and your cell number but could not get through to you. And we were really looking forward to having Michael on. But since we couldn't get him, we had our other guest stay on longer. And She's she a fasc- was, fascinating yeah, and lady. And she was happy to uh, help us out. So I'm going to uh, send you an email, Michael, and we want to have you next week for sure. And we're going to confirm that your numbers are valid. Okay. Now, let me say this about Michael, Michael Fandel. And uh, this guy was a former NYPD cop who, when he retired, decided to become a clown. Now, some people think that he was a clown before, before he, he became a cop, okay? And he will tell us which came first, the chicken or the egg. <laughs> anyway, anyway, Stan, uh, let's get back to Veterans Day. Veterans Day. Today and, is Veterans Day. And, and let's what, honor the, the soldiers Let's stop talking about politics because I, I was raised during the Vietnam era, so uh, you know the, our, our soldiers weren't honored. But despite the political uh, atmosphere, they're, they're brave young men and women who went out to serve our country. Yes. Have you ever gone to the uh, Tomb of the Unknown Soldier in Washington, D.C.? No, but I've seen it many times. It is very, very impressive, and it really gets you choked up, especially when you watch the changing of the guard. Yeah, well, I, I see. That, what, uh, the tomb is always being watched by uh, a uh, live officer, and when they change, it is amazing. Yeah, please stop the dogs from barking. Oh, that's my cell phone. Right, I know. It's a dog. Uh, you, you know, I, I love it's watching. Stopped. Yeah, I don't know if, if it's love, but it's very touching watching uh, the people going to the uh, the, the wall for the Vietnam, uh, Vietnamese soldiers, that, where, where that, the, the that names is are very etched, touching. That, and that, where they touch your name. And 
even if you don't have anybody who died there, it, it is something to watch. Yeah, it's I, very touching. I, I used to relate it, to, you know, to myself, but now that my sons are eighteen and nineteen, and, you know, two boys, I I can feel for the parents, uh, no matter how old they are now, who lost children, uh, you know, to the war, and 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 I see that as touching, and I, I'm almost ready to cry. Yeah, well, also, the draft has been a thing of the past. We haven't had a draft since the Vietnam War. I know, but now with the new Republican administration, you never can tell. I thought we're not getting into politics. We're not. But anyway, I hear our background music. That means it's, it's another time to show. It's say adieu, adios, hasta la vista. Do you realize it's only less than two months to the new year, 2015? It's, that, it's mind-boggling. That, that, that is, is that we're still alive. <laughs> anyway, you've been listening to The View from over here, heard on crntalk.com. You can get all our back shows at www.view from over here. Please contact us. Let us know what you want to hear, any people that you want. And if you're a sponsor that wants to get to the 11 million people, please call me. That's even more better. <laughs> more better. Stan, have a great week. And I'll see you next Tuesday when we'll have another fascinating show. Great show. Okay. (laughs) Bye, guys. Have a fantastic week. Bye-bye. The View From Over Here is a co-production of Infinity X and TBG International. For further information, contact Malcolm Berman at 818-687-2784. That's 818-687-2784. Around the CRN studios, we pride ourselves on being the station of every...